Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm here with another match preview. It's Everton versus Liverpool. It is the Merseyside Derby. It comes on Wednesday evening, 8pm. I'll be live, as, as you can see, I will be live at half past seven, 30 minutes or so before kickoff. Getting ready, you know, ready to watch Liverpool, hopefully get, pick up another three points. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I think the game's going to go. I'll give you a score prediction, and then I'll also give you a lineup prediction. But before I do that, please, if you haven't already, and you enjoy the content, please leave a like on the video. And most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It's free, it's easy, and it supports me so much. Honestly, every single person makes a massive difference. So, let's get into it. Um, I've just been going through the form, of course. Like I always do, I've got my notepad here. Everton, this season, they've, they've had a rough season, Everton. I do feel sorry for them. I know it's you probably don't hear that much from Liverpool fans, but I do feel sorry for them this season. They've played 33 games, they've won 10, they've lost 15, and they've drawn 8, which is a very, very poor record. Um, they, do, they, they really weren't playing well at all at the start of the season, but then they got that points deduction. I'll get into that a bit more in a little while. But they then seem to pick up their their game, you know, because they, they had this 10 points deduction hanging over them. They seem to be like, you know, we need to make up that 10 points. And then they had a, a run of some decent results. But then they just sort of fell off again. And yeah, <laughs> that's where they're at. 15 losses already this season. Um, over the last five games, the last five form is two wins, two losses and a draw. So pretty similar, pretty even, you know winning as much as they're losing um the last one out was a 2-0 win against nottingham forest and if you've watched the game or you've watched the highlights you'll know that they probably shouldn't have won the game there definitely should have been some penalties in it var and ashley young well vars let ashley young get away with murder in that game by the looks of it um yeah some terrible terrible decisions um it's going to be an honourable mention for shithouse of the week this week. Um, VAR is. Um, but yeah, a 2-0 win against Nottingham Forest. It probably should have been different. Nottingham Forest, obviously, ha feeling hard done by, especially with that um, little Twitter rant. But, you know, it was all a bit of banter for everybody else who's not involved in it. Um, and then the, the game before that, I, I wanted to mention it because they played away against Chelsea and they lost 6-0. So... That just goes to show the sort of season Everton are having. One day they get the luck and they, they get the rub of the green and they get a decent result. Next week they get battered 6-0. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Everton. This a bit of a yo-yo season for them. But, yeah, like I said, I want to get more into their points deduction because they have been deducted eight points. And without if they had them points that they wouldn't be much better obviously they'd be eight points better but they'd only be in 14th you know they're they're 16th and they're four points ahead of 17th so obviously they'd be eight points better off they'd probably be closer to um safety than relegation of course but what i don't get is they they played so well when the initial 10 points deduction was hanging over them but then that got reduced to six points and they just seem to be like, oh, yeah, well, it's OK. We've gained four points there and sort of just let their foot off the gas a bit. So, you know, maybe it's a bit of a psychological thing. I Obviously, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, you know, we've never seen anything like this before in the Premier League, which is also why I feel a bit sorry for Everton. Um, it's never been seen before. Then they got a further deduction of two points, all for financial breaches, which in the scheme of things are very, very little compared to the likes of what you see Chelsea and Manchester City and Real Madrid and PSG compared to what you see these teams doing what they're doing is absolutely nothing it looks like pennies um so I do feel sorry for them for that but that's the way it's going to go obviously there'll be some obviously legal proceedings going on over the course of the summer no doubt discussing that and also maybe some rule changes looking like it's going to favor the likes of City and Chelsea, which is absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, that'll be a another video when that all comes to light. So that's Everton's form. Liverpool, back to winning ways. That was a nice performance in the end. It, it seemed very similar to, you know, 
what's been happening. Liverpool were poor, slow to start off with. You know, if it weren't for that moment of magic from Trent, then it could have very well... If that, if that dragged on a bit more without Trent scoring that free kick, say Trent didn't score that free kick and a bit more time went, we got to half time at nil-nil. You know, you didn't get into the second half. I think, I think the game could have went very differently. But the fact that Trent scored that free kick and then Fulham got one back, it sort of... It gave us a bit of promise. And then when they equalised, it gave us a bit of urgency. And that's when Liverpool, in the second half, they really came out. Endo. Endo was two completely different players. The first half, I thought, oh, he's going to have to come off. Second half, he was Endo. He was brilliant again, winning everything that came near him, intercepting balls that you think he's just never going to reach. And that just sums up the Liverpool performance against Fulham on Sunday. Just two completely different halves. And the second half, they were well more assured. The changes really paid off for Klopp. I'm delighted that he actually had the balls to drop Salah and Nunes and Soboslai and McAllister and Kanate. All of the big names. The bench was absolutely wedged with talent. I'm delighted he done it because it was needed. Like I said in my stream, you can't keep expecting to do the same thing over and over and get a different result. That's how Einstein um, explained insanity. And yeah, done something different. The result changed. So I'm happy with that. And well, let's hope it continues into this game. So, with all that said, let's get into my score prediction. So, the score prediction, I'm going to go, I think Everton will score one because they are still in a relegation battle. They do want safety. It's a derby as well. It, I think it'll be a bit of a scrappy game. But I think Liverpool, like, well, I'm never going to go against Liverpool, am I? But I think Liverpool will come out on top. Um... I know we're not fighting for relegation, but we are fighting for a title. Um, I don't know which is more important because obviously being a Liverpool supporter, never really seen us in a relegation battle. So, yeah, that's what I think. 3-1. Um, let me know if you've got any thoughts in the comments below, of course. If you've got any score predictions, get them in. So with that, let's get into my lineup prediction. So here we go. A bit more of the same. Like I said, I really like the way we played. Allison in goal, of course. Bold's number one keeper. Um, he, he makes the simple stuff look easy. And then he comes out with some really cracking saves as well. And then Robertson and Trent as the two um, fullbacks, of course. <laughs> Simicast, I don't trust him one bit. Um, I was really getting into it into his style of play. He seemed to be getting there early on in the season, but then just hit a wall and just fell off it. But Robertson got passion. He's got that passion, hasn't he? He throws his heart on the pitch. Absolutely love to see it. So Robertson and Trent, you know, if Trent can put them in the top bins every week, you've got to have somebody like that on the pitch who's got that talent, haven't you? So, of course, them two. I was thinking here at centre-back, I was thinking drop Van Dijk, well, actually, I was thinking Kanate and Van Dijk would start because it's the derby. It's a big one. You want your best players out there. But the thing is, I was thinking, my thought process was, that's what I think Klopp will do. But I did. I wanted this lineup to be what I think it should be. Um, and that's why I went with Van Dijk and Kwanzaa. I was also thinking maybe he'll drop Van Dijk and have Kanate Kwanzaa. But... Yeah, again, I just don't think he's going to drop the captain. Um, so, and this is also what I'd prefer because Van Dyke is just better than Kanate at the moment. So, this is what I would prefer: Quanta and Van Dyke. Quanta didn't really put a foot wrong against Fulham; had a really assured performance. Great to have him come back and put in a performance like that after the abuse he got after the previous mistake against Manchester United. No player deserves to have that abuse, and for him to come back and put in such a performance is great. Um, shows he hasn't been knocked too much. Then into midfield, I've gone Endo, McAllister and Gravenberg. Of course, McAllister's going to come back into this game. Um, I'm not sure if Gravenberg will start. I want him to start because, again, great goal, well taken. And I really liked the way he played. He linked up really well with Gakpo. Um, and I just, yeah, I just really enjoy watching Gravenberg play. Obviously, when he's 
not at it, it's frustrating. But it's the same with every player when they're not at it. Um, but while he's in a good vein of form, keep him out there. Endo, of course, much more of the second half performance from Fulham. I'd like to see that from the start in this game. And yeah, McAllister, I just, I, it's the derby. McAllister's definitely coming back into it. Um, but I won't be surprised if Klopp plays Sobersly ahead of Gravenberg. Um, also, Elliot for me. A lot of people saying Elliot was really good and better than Gravenberg. I I don't know. I felt um, Gravenberg outperformed Elliot really um, against Fulham. So that's why I've went with Gravenberg ahead of Elliot. Then up top, the same again, of course. They finally some goals from open play. Jota, he doesn't need many chances to score goals. I was getting a bit frustrated with him. It weren't really coming off for him. It weren't really coming off for Gakpo either. There was a lot of endeavour from Gakpo. Just the finishing product wasn't there, but eventually got that assist and Jota got that goal to make it 3-1 and just kill the game off. Um, brilliant. Diaz was incredible from that right-hand side as well. He was in and amongst it. If Diaz plays like that, I'd much rather have Diaz out on the right than Salah. So that's why I've gone with this lineup because Salah and Nunes, I keep saying it, I am sick of watching them boot the ball over the bar Massive, massive chances they keep missing. And you can't keep doing it. You just can't keep doing it. It's just not good. And, well, as you can see, we're now in a horrible position where we were in a very good position, you know, competing on four fronts. Now we're only competing on two. Um, and it's all because of the lack of form from our main strikers. So that's my lineup in full. It is Allison, Robertson, Van Dyke, Kwanzaa, Trent. Then into midfield, it's Endo, McAllister, and Gravenberg. And then up top, I've gone with Gakpo, Jota, and Diaz. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you think I've made a huge mistake, if you think I'm being silly, or if you think I've got good points, let me know. Get in the comments below and, you know, have a chat and we can discuss it. Thanks, everybody who tuned in. Thanks for watching. Like I said, if you haven't already, please leave a like on the video and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. And I shall see you in the Everton game of the fucking Reds.